Okay, this is my magnetic motor project as it stands now. Um, it's still a work in progress, but uh, early indications show that um, it has some real possibilities um, and it's worthwhile to further look into it and, and develop it. So, to show what this is all about, we have permanent magnets peripherally arranged on a rotor there. And they're arranged with changing angles, so in such a way that the magnetic field at the periphery um, acts on a permanent magnet, which is, forms the stator, that the rotor will do one complete turn. So just to demonstrate that, um, hold that here, that's the point where it stops. Okay, now you can see it does one complete turn until it stops again, which is what we call the, the sticky point or the regaging point be between uh, the two magnets which close the circle. So we just turn that a little bit and it does one complete turn. So the idea with this motor now is to momentarily cancel out the permanent magnetic field which comes from a set of permanent magnets which sticks on the back of a core, it magnetizes the core where, where there's a coil around and so if this coil is activated it will um, deactivate the effect of the permanent magnetic field on the pole piece and uh, actually generate a magnetic field in the opposite direction just momentarily on the on the pole piece. So this whole thing is done with quite at this stage quite primitively with just a, a micro switch and hang on, I'll just get the light around here. Okay. There's a micro switch that's operated by a cam. And as it comes around here comes to the sticky point it will switch on just for one brief moment and cancel out the magnetic field. And in between that the rotor will be propelled by the permanent magnetic field. So that's the idea. So if we I mean the whole thing is at this stage is sort of not optimized yet. The the actual core for the coil is um I'll show you that here. It's just a bolt. It's a steel bolt. So it's no 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 fancy uh, magnetic material with low hysteresis or anything like that. Um, so there'll be a lot of lo losses there. Um, and um, there's no electronics at all. It just momentarily switches on the coil and switches it off again. Now here we've got a power supply that shows us volt and amps. So let's just turn this on now. Turn this on. So we can see now the if the coil is activated at 10 volts where it sits at the moment, it, the coil will draw about one amp. So we turn this up to 25 volt and the static draw of the coil is about 2 amps. Okay, so 25 volt is 50 watts. So, okay, let's just turn it back a bit. 15 volts. Okay, set this to 15 volts. Okay, go back to the motor. As you can see now, it's doing the thing. It's running. So every time the switch activates, it helps the rotor over the sticking point and can do another turn. Plus it gives it a bit of a kick as well in the right direction because the uh, magnetic field that's generated is stronger than just cancelling out the magnets. And um, there's also a effect, I suspect, that the collapsing 
magnetic fi uh, field of the coil, the collapsing electric field of the coil, um, generates a momentarily a magnetic field in the opposite direction, which also helps the, the rotation. So that's basically the f free extra kick we get out of it. So the interesting thing now is we let's just watch the amps on that. So running 15 volt, at 15 volt it was drawing just over 1 amp and on the amp meter it hardly registered at all. So let's go to 20 volt now. You see the needle just blipping just a little bit but it's not actually registering a lot. So let's just crank it up. Running 28 volts now. And the amps, if anything, they're they're actually going down. It's not there's no effect at all of the um, of the coil of the approaching magnet to the coil because this this motor does not expose the, the coil to a sudden increase in magnetic field strength which it has to fight against as the uh, coil field comes on um, because the, the magnetic field strength around the rotor is uh, pretty much uniform um, it's it's just the the uh, vector of the field lines changes um, on, on the circumference. So this is not at all like the magnetic Wankel motor, for example, where um, the magnets were arranged on a, on a spiral and um, moving further and further away f from, the, uh, from the radius and therefore diminishing in field strength so, and uh, setting up a, a gradient.